Hello everyone, I am Joe Flick with the Montana State Library and with me on the on our webinar today is Colleen McCarthy and Colleen works for uh, the U.S. Census Bureau and she is here as one of our kind of expert, uh, subject matter experts here so she can help answer your questions and we are planning a follow-up webinar uh, with Colleen and, uh, and and her colleagues from the U.S. Census Bureau. That will be some additional information. Today we are planning to just really focus on some highlights, a, a really high-level overview of what libraries in Montana can expect for the census and also to give you some updates on what we're doing at the State Library to help libraries get prepared and um, be able to have a, a a good response and help their communities get a complete count. So um, you can use the chat box for your comments or questions. I'd be happy to take those and I am going to be asking for your input in a minute. So be aware. Let's see, I gotta get on the right slide here. So we're hoping today that we are going to be able to help you feel confident in assisting your patrons to access the census form at your library. And we think you're going to get several, a lot of requests, we don't know how many, uh, for help in, in accessing the census form because there are a few changes to the way the census is being conducted that we think are going to impact more people maybe coming into the library to complete the form. We'll talk about that later. We also want you to Think about planning some programs that promote a complete count in your community. And the complete count is really what we're going for uh, statewide in Montana. We want to get a good, accurate account of where people are and how many people are in every community because that helps the state to um, get good records to create districts for voting. That's the primary reason that we want to do that. There's other reasons. We'll go into that a little bit more detail as well. So programs at the library can help um, people understand the importance of the census. So we hope you might consider doing that. We have some ideas for you. We want every librarian to be able to articulate why a complete count is important to our state and to your community and also to your library. So hopefully going to be giving you some information on about that. And we also want you to be able to explain to a patron that the census is part of U.S. law. It's in the foundation, actually, in the Constitution of U.S. law. So we're going to talk very briefly about that today. And we also want to be able to address your common concerns about the census. So last summer at the State Library, we did conduct a survey of librarians and so we could better understand what concerns you had. So hopefully we'll get to some of those at least today. So to get started, we're wondering how are you planning or already participating in promoting a complete count in your com community? So if you could answer one of these questions on the screen, either how are you, what are you already doing or what is your greatest concern? I'll give you all a minute or two to do that. You can use your microphone or the chat box. Okay, this is Lynn with the Thompson Falls Library. Hi, Lynn. Hi. And um, well, we're so far all we're planning to do is uh, put up signs and information about the census and why it's important all around the library as well as at the or computer stations. And then, of course, we will um, promote it on social media on our website and Facebook. Great, thanks. And I see from Jamie up in here in Glacier County, where I am, uh, where I am today, that they're also trying to reach out to those in rural areas. So I'll be interested in 
hearing how you're how you're planning to do that, Jamie, because I I think that's really important. That's one of the groups that that we're trying. Um, no one mentioned any particular great concerns you might have about the census at your library. Some of the um, information we got from our survey last summer indicated that libraries are concerned that they'll be called upon to answer questions that they don't know the answers to. And um, we're reminding them that their job is really just, your job is just to be able to direct people to the census form online and also to direct people to help. That you don't need to know the answers, but you just need to know um, who to call. So. We're going to go over that a little bit today, and we'll be providing you with a lot more information on that in early in the new year as things kind of ramp up for the census. So we'll go over the timeline today, too. So for some reason. Why is my, there we are. Okay, so just going, I think I'm going back a little bit. Um, in section one of our, in article two of the US Constitution, it explains that the, in order to create voting districts that are fair, so that every person has a vote that counts um, relatively equally, that it's important to keep an accurate count of where people are in the country. So that's the purpose of of the census is to count every man, woman, and child, um, and where wherever they are across the country. So Colleen and I noticed Lily also from the U.S. Census Bureau has joined us. Do you have anything else you'd like to add about the origin of the census in America? Oh, Joe, thank you so much. This is Lily. I'm so excited to be on with you. I just want to say that I just consider it my honor and privilege. Um, public service is uh, something I believe strongly in, and um, I just consider it my honor to serve uh, the people of Montana and the country uh, with a, a job that actually is mandated by the U.S. Constitution. I, this will be the only opportunity I have in my lifetime to say that, even though I have been a public service most of, in public service most of my life. So that's all I'll say. Keep it short and turn it back over to you. It's absolutely part of the U.S. Constitution, and we count every person, whether they don't need to be a citizen, they just need to be um, living here. And so uh, if you have any questions about who should or shouldn't be counted, there are tons of resources that you can direct patrons to for an answer. And then sometime in the new year, uh, we at the State Library will make sure that you have an 800 number that you can call uh, to, an to ha and hand a phone to a patron so they can get their questions answered. Just a fun fact, uh, the first census was done in 1790, and the majority of it was conducted on horseback. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Thank you, Colleen. And I should mention, I, I failed to um, adequately introduce you. I'm sorry. Um, Colleen McCarthy is one of the participant specialists in, here in Montana. Many of my libraries already know her. In fact, I got introduced to her by a librarian and because she has been visiting um, communities and libraries around the state to try to ramp up complete count committees and get things moving in the census, um, getting plans underway across the state. So welcome Colleen and Lily. So who the heck cares about this? Um, I mean, what difference does it make? And we'll go over some other questions that people have about the census, but this is a big one. You know, the Montana Census and Economic Information Center, which is a um, state agency in Montana that keeps track of data that is used by the state and by businesses across the state, um, they estimate that uh, the, that, uh, the census brings around $5 trillion into the state of Montana over the next 10 years. That's nearly $2,000 per person per year, so $20,000 per person. So that means everyone who isn't counted in the state of Montana, that that's a loss of revenue, a significant loss of revenue for our state. And some of that revenue impacts libraries directly. So it's in all of our best interests to really consider and um, getting a complete and accurate count. 
And then I should point out that Montana is in the unique position at this point in history of reclaiming a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. This is a seat that we lost here in Montana um, a couple, a few decades ago, almost three decades ago. And um, if we get it, I, I mean, I don't know if this matters, but we might we might steal one from Rhode Island. Um, of course, that's all up to the numbers, and it, we would have to get a, a actually complete count to be to have a chance of doing that. So, this is a unique year for that reason too. And then this is the most important part of this whole presentation today, really that there are some significant changes in 2020 that I we think, and the state librarian, your state librarian, has been actively um, involved in in this issue for a year now because looking ahead to 2020, the U.S. Um, Census Bureau is planning to collect most of the responses online or by phone. So in the past, you might have ha remembered having someone knock on your door or getting a form in the mail. We won't be mailing forms. At least most people won't be getting a, a mailed form. You'll be getting a postcard and asked to go online. They'll be like, um, would you call it an identifier number, Colleen, on the postcard that that helps um, you with completing the form online? Yes, and that identifier number is unique to your address, so um, you can use that or you can use your address. So if you leave your postcard at home, let's say you live out in the country, you leave it at home, you come into town, you decide, oh, I have five minutes, I'm going to answer this census. You don't have to have that number. You just need to have your address. So people may be waiting at home because they're, if they've taken participate in the census before, as most of us have, they may be waiting at home for someone to show up or waiting for a uh, census form to arrive in the mail. And um, we think libraries can help get the word out that as soon as they get that postcard, they can go ahead and complete their census form. They just need to be thinking about who will, will be in their household um, as of April 1st, which is Census Day. So. This is a concern for a very rural state like Montana, especially one like ours where we know we have a lot of people that do not have internet access at home. And so they might be reluctant to call or not understand. They might give the phone call a try and get frustrated or something. We don't want them to give up. So we're hoping that libraries being a friendly place that people are used to, those folks especially that don't have internet service are used to going to when they need access to the internet, that they'll be coming in to see you again. So um, I think I think that's something we can pretty much count on. Um, we saw that happen in libraries when the Affordable Care Act became available. Uh, this year, when the Bureau of Land Management changed how some of their reporting and requested certain things be done only online, we saw libraries saw an uptick in the number of ranchers coming in. And we know we have certain communities in our state where internet access just isn't um, available, like our Hooterite colonies and um, some of our more rural areas where there just isn't an option to get internet. So for all those reasons, we think the role of libraries is really stepped up in this in this census. And that's one of the reasons why your state librarian and my boss, Jenny Stapp, has been so active in um, uh, on committees, both at the state and national level, to help make sure that libraries have all the tools that they need uh, to be ready. Well, you might get really busy next April. <laughs> if else? I could just um, yeah. interject here, please do uh, a little bit about how this will roll out. Um, so the first week or two of March, people that receive mail delivery at their homes, they will get the invitation. Uh, it's a letter that will come inviting you to respond to the census. And you can do that either online or by phone. If you do not receive mail delivery to your home, especially those rural areas that are just PO box, um, they will actually have the invitation hand delivered to their home. So 
they still have an option of either using going online or um, using the phone. If they choose not to do that, eventually during that month, they they will get the paper copy. Eventually, you will get a paper copy uh, to fill out to mail in. Even though you do have a paper copy, let's say you ignore all the letters and everything, and you do get that paper um, survey to mail in, you still have an option to go online or use the phone. And then if all else fails and we you don't respond in any of those ways, then an enumerator, a census taker, will knock on your door and ask you to respond. So that's kind of the process that starts the 1st of March and goes through the end of April. Have I got that right? Lily, anything you want to add? That's good. L Lily's also on the road today, so she may be in and out and be able to chat with us. Um, so these are some of the ways that we at the State Library have identified um, might be ways that libraries kind of step up to help Montana to get a complete count. Uh, you, of course, will be making your public computers and Wi-Fi available in in your library. Some libraries are considering setting aside a computer so that anyone who walks in can immediately access a census form. Um, you will be, we will, we want you to be able to um, uh, bring up the census form online for your patrons and get them started and then refer them if they happen to have questions or need help. So again, I'll, um, we're going to be providing you with those exact links um, as soon as they are uh, uh, made public, probably early in the new year. And uh, we will want you to be able to direct patrons to different language versions of the form. And we're hoping, although this is all of this is completely optional based on what your community needs and what resources you have, that you might want to provide programs that help inform your community and dispel any myths that people may have about um, the federal census. So one of the things that came up when we asked librarians about what concerns they might have was they thought maybe patron, they thought patrons were be concerned about data privacy. So this, just to point out, and I will ask Lily and Colleen to jump in on this as well. Um, this, the census has, there's, there's laws in U.S. code that prevent the census from being used from the information in the census for any kind of privacy invasion. It's for statistical use only. Individuals' responses can't be accessed by political groups or um, anything like that. Uh, so I, Colleen, Lily, do you have anything else you would like to add? Oh, I should point out that census data, because you may have noticed if you've ever worked with patrons on researching genealogy, that there is useful stuff in, this, in the census data, the old census data, and it is eventually released to the National Archives and available, but only when it's 72 years old. So um, it's not like it's available to, uh, per, to peruse uh, 10 years from now. I would just add on to that, that census enumerators, census takers, and this applies to any survey that the U.S. Census Bureau conducts, the decennial, the ACS, the labor survey, our employees are sworn, they have to swear an affidavit, and they are not just sworn for the time that they work for us, they are sworn for life. It is against the law for a Census Bureau employee to disclose who they're talking to, where they're at, uh, or any information that they gather. And should they violate that, it is a $250,000 fine and five years in prison. So this is something that the Census Bureau is protecting people's privacy is what makes the Census Bureau um, probably the premier census. Uh, you take it quite seriously. <laughs> very, very seriously. Okay. And, um, and just to... 
the ACS that Colleen referred to is the American Community Survey, which is the longer format survey that you maybe have completed yourself or um, with for a business may have completed. That's done. That's not the the census that's used to create um, the voting districts. The the one that's set in in uh, the US Constitution that we're talking about today, but also a very useful place to get data and information. Um, and just an aside, uh, we are planning to do some training over the next couple of months on accessing data from the ACS for librarians. We've had a lot of people express interest in that. Um, so we're, we're just getting ready. I'm, it's on my list of things to do to, to organize some of that training for you, although there's already lots of good um, self-paced training um, at census.gov on how to access and find information um, using that resource. But that's an aside. It really, today we we're talking really about the diennial census. So about the cons other concerns that your patrons may have, whoops, sorry, back back up here. Um, it takes, some say, well, it takes too long. Well, they may have filled out the ACS, which is a longer format survey, but the U.S. Diennial Census is just nine questions for the primary respondent, and then some follow-up questions for everyone else in the household. It really doesn't take very long if you, um, and I'll just re post that quote or that um, link to the census, I really urge you to print out a copy of the census, hand it to all of your staff and volunteers, have them sit down and fill it out and, and, and see what questions come up or see if, I think almost everyone would agree it's much simpler than they thought it might be. Um, or they worry, maybe a patron will say, well, there's no benefit to me. Well, $2,000 per person in federal funding is not coming to Montana. That's going to money going to some other state. That's infrastructure, healthcare, education, our libraries. That's money that Montanans can use that um, to, to make our state be more competitive and function better. Probably the most important reason that we complete the census every 10 years is that we have fair and accurate voting districts. And of course, here in Montana, we do have the opportunity to double our representation in the U.S. House of Representatives. Just had to mention that one more time. So we don't want, people will often say, I don't want the government to have any information about me. And, and um, we in Montana, Montana libraries are very sensitive to private information. So let's remember that by law, we as residents of the United States are by the under the Constitution are required to truthfully complete that form. But it's also important to, to remember that for the most part, if your form is incomplete, if somebody doesn't fill out something because they just refuse to answer a question, that those form that information as much as possible is still counted. So while you're while, while it is a patriotic responsibility of living here to complete the census, um, you won't be uncounted if there's a question or two that you um, simply a patron just refuses to answer. And Colleen or Lily, do you have anything else to add about that? No, I think you summed it up pretty well. So this is this is the postcard I received in the mail about a month ago. Um, right now, the Census Bureau is actively looking for census workers. I think, Colleen, you told me last week or so that you need to hire how many people in Montana? You know, I've been told too many numbers. Lily, do you know the answer to that? It seems to Lots. change every day. Lots. <laughs> More than hundreds. <laughs> But for sure, and um, yeah, that these are they're good jobs that that pay um, what twelve, twelve, fifteen, eighteen dollars an hour, um, something like that, depending on what you do. Um, and then what's going to be happening? I think Colleen mentioned in March these postcards are going to start going out to households. It won't be this postcard; it'll be a, a different one. Um, and then April 1st is the census day. And when we say that, what we mean is that whoever is residing in your household on April 1st will be counted in that spot. So um, 
this is one of the most area, I think most of the confusing confusion happens in the census is, you know, who to count where. And the Census Bureau has lots of information and you can, uh, on, and to, on solving that question. For instance, let's say um, an elderly parent is residing with you because they have a long-term illness on April 1st, even though they have a house someplace else, but they're residing with you on that day, um, then they would be counted at your house. If they died in the middle of the afternoon on April 1st, they get counted. If, um, if you're uh, daughter has a child on April 1st after 12.01 a.m. <laughs> they get counted. So um, it's, it's uh, th those kinds of questions do come up, but all of that is very, um, you can point your uh, patrons to resources at census.gov that will answer their questions. There's just a ton of stuff out there. And we have I links to all of it. Clarify on the jobs, if I could, real quick. Sure. Um, we just raised the pay. So in Lewis and Clark County, Cascade County, Yellowstone, Missoula, and that could Billings. Be it. Oh, Billings. Okay. Yeah, Yellowstone. The pay has been raised to nineteen fifty an hour, and seventeen dollars for the rest of the state. So that is a substantial amount of money for a temporary part-time job in Montana. That's a good deal, yeah. So if you know somebody's looking for work, I know we have a low unemployment rate, so, but um, this is a opportunity for them. And you're hi doing a lot of that hiring right now. And I know some of our libraries have been hosting uh, Census Bureau sort of like job fair days, um, helping people get their applications in, um, do their fingerprinting, um, that kind of thing. So that's something you might uh, be able to do right now. And those jobs are all going to get hired up in the next few weeks. So uh, let's see. And then we are planning a, and I should have put this on the timeline. I have it later on in the, in the presentation. Um, the State Library, we looked at um, planning activities on April 1st, but that happens to be the first day of the Montana Library Association annual conference. And we know many of our librarians are committed to attending their annual conference. So we are instead planning to promote statewide a library week during the um, National Library Week, which is April 20, 19th through the 25th. So the State Library is going to be doing some statewide promotion that uh, uh, suggests that people can just contact their library to find out what's going on. So we encourage you to plan some activities April 19th through 25th. Um, maybe you pick a day and have invite people to come in and have cookies and punch and fill out their census forms, or maybe you have a family activity related to the census or um, a speaker or something like that. And just a reminder that people do not need to fill out their census in April. Actually, um, the count will continue through July, so forms can continue to be submitted. And several libraries have suggested that we plan a follow-up activity day in June. Um, kind of at the start of summer reading. So I'm going to ask your opinion about that today because we're still um, discussing what would be the best day for that. So a couple of other things you need to know about the census. We have some hard to count counties. So Jamie, notice our county is got a very small mail return rate and um, probably a lot of that has to do with our you know, the community on the reservation are particularly hard to count. Um, so that's a concern. Um, we, these are the hard to count counties in Montana. And, and so if you live in any of these places, um, be aware that there will be more resources in, in these communities, more enumerators going door to door. Um, they won't be necessarily counting on everybody coming to the library to complete their form, but everyone may still do it that way. They may still go online. Is there anything else you want to say about hard to count areas, Khalid or 
Lily? That was great. Uh, this is Lily. I just want to say um, our team, um, in addition to what we're talking about now, our team has been reaching out to hard to count communities in a variety of ways, whether that's connecting with um, the local churches or the schools or the school districts. Um, the best way that a hard to count community or a community that uh, is not likely, the percentages don't speak to their likelihood of filling out the census without some encouragement, the best way to have them fill out the census or get trust to fill out the census is through a trusted voice. We consider librarians top of that list. Um, other people who would be at the top of that list would be a healthcare worker or a teacher or a faith leader, but primarily family. So family members can encourage other family members to do it. And this is where story time with mom and five-year-olds and um, you know, I, we pull over at libraries because Colleen and I all, we all work on the road. I'm sitting in a car right now, snacking on my lunch, listening to this fantastic webinar. And so we know that when we come into towns and we go into libraries, we see the families there engaging with each other and with the books and with other electronic ways of reading and learning and being in that space, which I always find so pleasant. And so you are among the trusted voices that can help us disseminate the information that it is very, very safe and secure to fill out the census and why it's so important. Thank you for letting me share that. Oh, I think that was great. Thanks for that vote of confidence. I and mean, we all love our libraries, but it's nice to know that <laughs> other people do. <laughs> and so, oh, and I, um, so yeah. can I share one little tidbit? I, I sure. wanted to really share with you. Um, I shared with Joe with an email earlier today or last night that I just presented. I, I live in Colorado, but I work in Wyoming, Montana, and Colorado. And I did a presentation to the Denver Public Librarians last week. And it was by coincidence that somebody said something about a library card just as I was about to go up to present. And I'm like, oh, wait, they're going to love this. I whipped out my three library cards I still carry with me in my belfold. And one of them is from, I'm 48, and I, one is from the fourth grade. And the Denver Public Library System has grown um, in, in, the, in that short period of time, even uh -huh. though I feel older in the and so I whipped it out. It's a paper copy of my library card that I laminated myself in the fourth grade with my signature. And they flipped it over and saw all the branches on the back of the library card. And of course, it's that's not the same. It's it's much larger now as a system. And they all passed it around the room, just commenting on how neat it was to see a paper card. And the plastic card I passed around was worn and torn and different colors. And I said, know that when I'm not working on the census, because I've had zero time to read for leisure purposes now, I love libraries. And I think you all are just saving the world with the work that you do, because we know that you're social workers, you're community engagers, you're uh, conveners. And again, just going back to the trusted voice. But I let me say thank you for letting me share that story that had nothing to do with your presentation. <laughs> it's a great story. Um, so I've, there's a question from Jamie because on this slide the complete count committees in across the state. So this is something that Colleen has been working on trying to get these complete count committees up and running. And it, Jamie asked about you know who's the complete count c contact for Glacier County. So thank you for that. Um, Let's see, I'm going to actually go to the live version of this map. I'll bring that up on the screen. And here is Glacier County right here. So actually, I'm going to click on this one right here. So here, there's also one, Jamie, for the, for the reservation for the Blackfeet tribe. So this is your complete count contact in Glacier County, Chihan Khalid. So hopefully that's somebody you know. Um, and I can put this link right here from the census. She's on our team. Oh, okay. Yep, and we're happy to, to take the next step if you reach out to her. And then um, I want to go back to that map for a second. Oh, can I get it to go back? Oh, I have to click on this little X. Yeah. So in on the, the Blackfeet tribe, it's George Kipp. I don't know if you know George, great guy. Um, he's at Blackfeet Manpower. 
so you can so this is an interactive map on the um, Montana CEIC website and any of these stars or circles are clickable what you'll find with complete count committees is that most counties county government is kind of in charge sometimes the librarian might be in um, the person in in charge of organizing the complete count committee for a county um, but also cities have complete count committees colleges have them and a few organizations have formed complete count committees as well across the state so in some communities like if you zoom into this map and say uh, let's look at Missoula for example you're gonna find a whole bunch of different see there's like three right there in Missoula different ones probably one down here for the college nope Missoula County um, another one up here and then yeah so three different count oh, that's not I know that I've seen ones for the college maybe it was at Bozeman but um, yeah look at here we have Bozeman Gallatin County MSU Dean and the Montana State University has their own complete count committee so hopefully that's um, helpful for, for you to go into that link finding who your contact is and um, reaching out to them and saying you know we're planning some things at the library you could maybe have them come in and talk to you or do a pro program so the other thing we really want you to do today is consider oop, let me back up I keep hitting too many links here we want you to consider becoming the census champion at your library and we would like every public library every publicly funded library in montana to identify someone as the census champion and all of you will get an invitation from me to go and complete um, a very quick survey listing who who should be the contact at your library and those are the people that i'm going to stay in touch with um, uh, after the first of the year as information kind of comes out about the census and they need to be informed all the census champion has to do is just be the contact person the person who's looking for information and the person who connects with your local complete count committee so in many cases that will be the director but it doesn't have to be the director of course we we'll hope you'll look for opportunities to promote a complete count in your community maybe help to run a program but rather than us sending sort of blanket posts out to our statewide listserv we'd like a really good count and we have some other people who are interested in reaching out to you as well and so we want to be able to direct people to just the right person at your library so I'll send you all a link to um, complete at the end of our session this afternoon. So hopefully you'll get that done. We're getting that list together before the end of the year so that we have um, a good list uh, to work with. So these are the things you can be doing now. You can help dispel myths about the census by promoting programs, putting up uh, posters we have a bunch of resources online that we can share with you we have been distributing uh, stand-up posters that you can put up at at the checkout counter that just remind people that the census is coming up and that everybody needs to be counted you can promote per participate participate I can't say that word participation uh, just by saying I, I plan to complete the census um, I hope you do too uh, you might facilitate access to the internet I saw that some people are planning to make sure that their you know computers are available we are thinking about um, and I wish I could find one that somebody else created so I don't have to make it but some kind of um, monitor uh, graphic that you could just set cut out and set on top of the monitor that'll be kind of cute and informative and just say here's how you here's how you complete the census so you create a little buzz you might want to also use your social media um, and Lynn mentioned that to just help promote that the library is a place where people can go to get questions answered about the census and to access the census and please help us reach out to historically undercounted populations in our state especially Native Americans children are historically a lot of people don't know that children are supposed to be counted so um, that's something you can in your story times you know the next time you do a counting book 
just say, oh, and did you know the 2020 census is coming next year and every child gets counted. We also have a um, activity uh, that we're going to suggest that you do that helps promote that as well. Um, and then persons who are not currently living in a traditional kind of household, and we know in many of our rural areas, this is very common. Those oftentimes are people that don't get counted in our state. So if you have other ideas, I'd be happy to hear them. And Lily or Colleen, if, you ever, if you've heard of other things, let us know. And then this kind of goes on to what our actual dates are. So one thing I can do, Joe, this is Lily. Um, I don't know that we can make it fun and exciting. We can certainly try, but we have a guy who's in-house who is busier than all get out. Of course, you can imagine. But what I would think would be fun was that the whole region can use. We're, we're one of uh, 12 states. Montana is in a 12-state region for us. So the whole region could use something fun and exciting to put... Um, uh, you said a graphic for libraries on how to fill out the census. Let me ask him if he can mess around with it as a graphic person and with our messaging. And they we may, will call you know, follow we, up. Yeah, and I was thinking of a of a monitor topper. And we for a few years ago we had we had one for one of our databases that we had that just it was you print it out on a piece of paper and you cut it out and you fold it together and it sits on top of the computer monitor and um and it was the cutest darn thing and um our libraries use them like crazy so something like that i think would get widely used but you know if, so if, if you Sounds fun. If anybody comes across an, something like that i'd really like to hear about it um and then um so June 3rd is tentatively the date that we're looking for a follow-up. It's not too late to be counted day at the library. We were thinking this was a suggestion that came from a, um, a group of librarians at one of our first trainings for the census that as things ramp up in libraries for summer reading, that's a great opportunity to just remind people uh, who are coming into the library, haven't been there for a while, you know, it's not too late. <laughs> so um, thinking that, uh, that that might be the date. So watch for more information about that. And of course, April 19th through the 25th, uh, go ahead and put that's library week next year. That's National Library Week. So do plan at least some census activities for that week. We'll be issuing a press advisory that says libraries across the state are planning activities to promote um, a complete count. And check your local library for details. So we will be asking you for more information as you do get things planned so we can help to promote it for you as well. And we'll be providing more materials. And along that line, we have already created in Montana a 16-page Montana Library Toolkit that has um, information in it that you can share with staff and volunteers. If you haven't got one, let me know and I'll make sure to get one in the mail. Jamie, I don't know if you had one, but I can drop one by um, at the Browning branch someday if you don't, and I'd be happy to do that. I've got a few extra here. We also have a stand-up poster I think I mentioned that can sit up at your um, at your checkout counter. And Lynn, yes, I'll make sure that you guys get one. And I don't know, Guna, do you have one? I might be able to put, I might have three here I can put all in the mail today. And then I do have a page that has all this information um, on our website at State Library, and I'll go ahead and put that link in the chat box as well in just a second. And I just wanted to share with you, this is one of the resources on that page. It's a photo prop coloring sheet. So you print this off and have kids color it on some nice heavy duty paper. And then you cut it out, this little hat, and attach it to a dowel or, a, you know, 
um, tongue depressor or some little stick and then kids hold it up and get their picture taken at the library. Any kid who's under the age of 10 on April 1st didn't get counted last time. So it's their first census. So a photo op day at the library would be a really fun thing to do next spring. Okay, so Jamie says she got one when she went to the Pathfinder meeting. So Lynn, I will make sure you get your um, census toolkit. And I just, this is brand new information. Just yesterday we connected with the Montana State University Nursing Program, who is planning uh, to have some special training for their student nurses who are out and about next spring and requiring them as part of their internship experience, or they don't call it internship, practicum experience, that uh, they do at least two full days of um, public health awareness information about the census because the census also affects how the resources available for public health throughout our communities. So we are working with them and we'll get them the our all of our census champion contact information so that students can easily hook up with with you and come in to either run a program or help um, patrons uh, during your census activity. So they're going to be telling their census their students about Census Week in the library and suggesting that that's one easy way for them to get their um, meet that credit requirement next spring. So we're partnering with MSU to get you some extra help in your library. I think this is a really great partnership. And by the way, um, my state library noted that lib of, of two professions that are most trusted in our communities, librarians and nurses are at the top of the list. So there's a bit of kindred spirits there. And with that, I just love to take your questions and um, give Colleen and Lily any opportunity to make some final comments. Well, I this is Colleen, and I just wanted to um, I wanted to reiterate kind of what Lily was saying. I personally can't thank all of you librarians enough. I have my area of the state has been the northeast corner, and it didn't matter how small the library was, who I walked in to talk to, they knew exactly what I was talking about when I said, I'm here to talk about the 2020 census, the response was welcoming and they were like, oh, we've been waiting for you. And I have two librarians, one in Weibo, Mindy in Weibo and Carrie in Garfield County. And if it weren't for those two ladies, we wouldn't have a CCC in those counties. They have taken on the role of actually carrying the CCC and just been wonderful. So I just wanted to, as a partnership specialist out there on the ground, thank all of you. And uh, if you have any questions, um, Joe has my contact information. Any information I can share with you, please let me know. And we do have partnership specialists working around the state. And so you may have one visiting soon at your library if you haven't already met your uh, partnership specialist. And if, certainly if you attend your uh, complete count committee meetings that if they haven't already occurred will be happening really soon, um, you'll get a chance to meet your complete your um, partnership specialist from the US Census Bureau. So that's that's what we have done so far here at the State Library to help libraries and we have plans to do more and um, and let's see if there's anything else I can think of. Um, I, uh, in the toolkit is a suggestion for um, a book display. You can there are you could do a in the children's area you could do counting books uh, in in the adult area there are um, I actually put together, found a book list of books related that have themes and stories related to 
uh, the census. And so that's a possibility, all kinds of things that you could be doing. And of course, you do have time, plenty of time to plan. Uh, the things really won't ramp up until March and things will get busy in March and April. But um, to, we just want you to know about it, kind of keep it on your front burner, start moving things up to the front burner and be on the lookout for more information. You'll be getting an email, follow-up email from me that asks you to complete that um, census championship survey to tell me who at your library is the right contact person and you'll get um, a, an invitation to to fill out a evaluation and tell me if you there's anything else in terms of training that you might need. So. That's it. That's all that uh, we have for you today. I am talking to Colleen and Lily about doing a follow-up webinar with them. They have some more detailed information to share with you. So we might be planning that for um, uh, later in December or January. So, And certainly after the first of the year, there will be a lot of more information coming out. Thank you, Joe. This was fantastic. I'm so glad. I, uh, if you all could see me, this we have a, a quote in the census, um, uh, we have a couple, it is what it is, and that gets us through every single day. Um, <laughs> and then the other quote is, hashtag this is the census. So I pulled over, <coughs> pardon me, I've got my lunch here in the middle of my GMC. I got my notebook to take notes on your uh, presentation. I whipped out my laptop, got that going on the uh, steering wheel. And uh, as soon as we're done here, we're back on the road and we're gonna get back to work. And this has been fantastic and we, we really look forward to engaging with you at the next opportunity. We, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We know that uh, you're going to get questions you don't know the answers to. And um, one of the things I think we can do is uh, uh, follow up to, to Joe to give you all of the names of our team members uh, and emails and, and phone numbers. And the, we have a map of the state. And we, we can share that out with Joe sure. um, here in the coming days. It, it, it's very helpful to know who your partnership specialist is where. And then I'll give you my cell number, Joe, and you're welcome to call me or call Colleen any time. Text us and say, we got something we need to know. So um, uh, one closing comment, again, here in Colorado, I hate to use a Colorado example on this call, but this is something that came to mind. We did have somebody who received what they thought was a census form now, and census forms are not out now. And they went into a library in Longmont, Colorado. So see, they went to their trusted voice. They went to the librarian. And they said, what do I do with this form? I just got it. And the librarian connected the dots, called their local CCC, their local CCC called the partnership specialist. The partnership specialist called me and all of us jumped on a quick phone call and we answered that one person's question out of 5 million people in the state of Colorado within an hour and a half. So that's the role you all play. Yeah. That I one of the things that's in the toolkit is the page from your website, Lily, from the census.gov site about how to identify a census worker because that was something that came up in our survey that people have concerns about and librarians know that somebody is going to call them and say somebody was at, is at, in my neighborhood and are they legitimate they're going to call the library they're going to the library or the police department and a lot of our towns don't have police departments so um, they're going to call a librarian and so there is a little section that you explain how to how to identify a census worker they all have id um, they uh, there's a the census uh, doc of uh, um, your logo is displayed on there on the materials that they're carrying a backpack or a briefcase and so they should be um, and there's a number you can call to um, verify that person's identity so those are the things that you know libraries get called upon to do every day so as you are getting, um, if you have any other questions or specific training that you want or need, please let me know and I will be happy to plan that for an upcoming webinar. Thanks everybody. Have a lovely rest of the day. I will be um, uh, ending our recording now and um, uh, getting this posted. So please let your friends know. We'll be doing this webinar again in December, the same exact content we're going to be covering. There might be a few updates then. And then starting in January, we'll probably have some follow-up material that will be more specific. Okay, thanks everybody.